And that concludes my report. Is there any public comments? There is. There always has to be someone. Joseph Morabito. <laughs> Thank you for showing up to give us at least one public comment. Exactly. exactly. Uh, let me digress for a minute. Um, I read in some blog somewhere a direct quote from Melissa Melendez on that topic, uh, at, you know, with the reporter in her face as she answered it. So it's out there that she said it. As far as um, this election for District 4, uh, initially I uh, was like, why would we do that? I'm still that way, but today I happened to bump into Marianne Edwards and Greg August, their council members at local cities. And I mentioned it to them, and they were like, they had the exact opposite opinions. Um, Dan, or sorry, it's Greg August, he is running also unopposed in districts. And Menifee, and he said, it was funny, because he, he was like, he almost wanted to, he almost wanted to throw. <laughs> but no, he was like, no way. I, I want to get elected. I said, you were elected. It's not like you're just coming off the street, and you're the only guy. You were elected. But he and um, Marianne Edwards both seemed to take that approach that, no, it's better to be elected. And I said, well, maybe in your cities you've got the extra money to spend on it. So it would really all come down to a cost issue. If there's no extra cost, then obviously Bridget's name on there, on the ballot, well, what's the difference? But it's, it's all about saving money, um, is the way I see it. Because uh, I've never been one to, what do they say, stand on ceremony, you know, just have uh, style over, uh, or is it, uh, yeah, style over substance. It, there's no point to uh, a vote where there's really no options. You know, it's, isn't that what they did in Iraq with uh, old Saddam? Whatever. He had 101 percent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's just my opinion. So. <laughs> Any other public comments? That's all the speakers that I do have. Uh, council input. Well, I I would like to just go ahead with this. I don't see why we need to go to a vote, vote on it when they uh, there's nothing to vote on. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, other than it's nice to have your name on the ballot, it's nice to have your ballot statement out there. Um, there's no reason to spend the money just because. So if this is a costing measure, and as we're our item before, where we're short $1.9 million a year, uh, obviously every penny counts, uh, especially since we only put $1,800 back in our budget last year. So, yeah, I am all for uh, canceling the election in this district mm -hmm. and moving forward and nominating Bridget Moore. It, um let me ask you something. If Bridget's name was on there, would there be another space on there for people to actually write that somebody in? Yes. If you do have an election, you do allow a write-in period. Right. Okay. Well, the only problem I would have with that kind of a system is you don't know who the person is. And if they, they weren't qualified. They never qualified to be on the ballot in the first place, so therefore nobody knows anything about them. So that would be my only concern with having somebody written in versus... And since there is nobody else to run, I feel, you know, there's no reason to go on and spend the money. I well, agree. Let me explain about okay. write-ins. It, it's not just anybody can say, I'm a write-in, mm -hmm. write my name in. They have to go through the same thing that people who have their name on the ballots, they have to go through the same thing, the nomination paper, all of that stuff. The difference is their name is not on there and they can't have a candidate statement. Oh, I got you. I got you. But I, I, I also want to address... Um, Marianne and, and the other gentleman saying it's better to be elected. A nomination paper is an election. Mm -hmm. Those people who sign that have elected you to that office. That's right. So it is not an appointment. And I too was confused about that um, uh, until in my last city it got clarified for me. Um, but that nomination paper, it's not just names saying, yeah, 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 go ahead. It's people electing that person. So it is, and they do serve, if you appoint, um, or if you cancel the election and appoint Bridget to that, what you're in essence doing is saying she has been elected and she does serve as if elected. It's even in the election code that way. Very good. That makes it a lot even a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. Now we're just not appointing somebody that they actually has 30 people that cleared or how many numbers that she got on that paper, which would be a lot probably. Exactly. Okay, and I have a motion to elect Bridget Moore. Do I have a second? One. Second. Oh. <clears throat> the, the motion would be to approve resolution 216-51. Okay. okay. Is that motion? Okay, he's got the motion. You second? Bob? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0 with uh, Bridget Moore and Marcia Swanson absent. And she has now been re-elected. Congratulations, where is she? <laughs> Congratulations, you're re-elected. Um, now, she will be, um, she's a council member elect at this point. She does not take office until uh, December. She doesn't take office until she leaves it? <laughs> That's right. In the same moment. <laughs> so you are a council member elect at this point. But you're also a council member. Okay. Oh, heck, you're the mayor. You're the, you're the mayor. <laughs> you're still the mayor. <laughs> well, I say, and I want to clarify that why I use council member, because your elected title is council member. And that's why I say it that way, even though I am very aware you're the mayor and you're the mayor pro tem, but you weren't elected as the mayor and the mayor pro tem. No respect. So.